All right, guys. How's it going? Hope you guys are doing great. Um, we're going to continue with the Tiger Rising again today. Um, just for a quick little review. Um, we read uh, 15, 16, and 17 last time. And that was when uh, Rob and Sistine had gone to look at the Tiger. And whenever they were there and talking and looking at it, Rob got this overwhelming sense of happiness like he hasn't felt this feeling this happiness feeling in quite some time and and he liked it he didn't he didn't want to lose it um when they got back to the motel um where uh rob lives with his dad um his dad was actually there and met them um at the front and sistine was like well i need to go and uh call you know i need to call my mom to come and get me and she found out that they did not have a phone in their room where they're staying, where they live. And she was very confused as to why they didn't have this phone. She just kind of assumed that everybody had a phone. Um, so she needed some change to go call her mom. So they gave her some and she went and called her mom to come and get her. Um, so when her mom gets there, she pulls in and you know, just, um, her mom was very much so like Sistine. She looked very, um, prim and proper and all, you know, her hair was the same color of that yellow blonde color. And, um, she calls her sissy. Her mom calls Sistine sissy, you know, sissy, get in the car. And Sistine does not want to get in the car. She doesn't want to listen to her. She doesn't like being here. She's not happy with her mom. She is actually pretty rude to her mom. Um, calls her mom a liar. And her mom is trying to be nice. She's trying to be nice to Rob as well. Kind of trying to talk to him, have a little conversation with him. Um, and Sistine, kind of in the middle of all this, really wants Rob to tell her what Rob's mom's name is. And he finally tells her, you know, her name's Caroline. And it felt really good to him to actually like say her name because he hasn't talked about his mom since the funeral. Because his dad said, no more. We're done, we're moving on, we're not gonna fret, we're not gonna worry about her. So um, she's definitely not, uh, she's happy that he told her his mom's name. Uh, she's, she's passed away. Um, so then the next day he is helping Willie May out in the laundry room again and they have a conversation about whether or not it's good to keep animals locked up, are zoos right or wrong, and um, you know, at the very end of the chapter, Rob says, well, um, I, know, I know someone who's, or I know something that's locked in the cage. And Willie Mae doesn't really ask any questions. She just says, well, don't we all know something that's in a cage? Doesn't everybody know something that is locked up, that is put away, that can't get out? Okay, she just says everybody. And it's just nothing to cry over. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so that's kind of, they finish chapter 17. He and Willie Mae having a conversation about animals. Okay, so we're going to start chapter 18. Rob was sweeping the cement walkway in front of the Kentucky Star rooms when Beauchamp pulled up in his red Jeep and honked the horn. Remember, Mr. Beauchamp is the one that owns the gas station and the motel. Hey there, he hollered. Beauchamp was a large man with orange hair and an orange beard and permanent toothpick on the side of his mouth. The, uh, the toothpick waggled as he talked as if he were trying to make a point of its own. We got you on the payroll now too, Beauchamp shouted. No, sir, said Rob. All right, hooted Beauchamp. He hopped out of the Jeep. Got you working for free. That's what I like to hear. Yes, sir, said Rob. Ain't you supposed to be in school? Are you done graduated already? The gold chains buried deep in Beauchamp's orange chest hair winked at Rob. I'm sick, said Rob. Sick and tired of school, right? He slapped Rob on the, butt, on the back. Don't got a mama putting down the rules for you, do you? Get to make your own rules. Not me, said Duchamp. He jerked his head in the direction of the motel where his mother, Ida Bell, worked at the front desk. He winked at Rob and then looked to the left, then to the right. Look here, 
he said in a quieter voice. I've got me a number of deals going on right now, a few more than I can probably handle. I wonder if a smart boy like you wouldn't be looking for a way to pick up some extra spending money. He didn't wait for Rob to answer. Let me tell you what I got cooking. You like animals? Rob nodded. Of course you do. What boy don't? You like wild animals? Rob's heart skipped a beat. He suddenly knew where Beauchamp was headed. I got me a wild animal, said Beauchamp. I got me a wild animal like you would not believe right here on my very own property. And I got some plans for him, some big plans. But in the meantime, he needs some taken care of, some daily maintenance. Are you follow me, son? Yes, sir, said Rob. All right, said Beauchamp. And he slapped Rob on the shoulder again. Why don't you climb on, in, on into this Jeep and let me take you for a ride? Show you what I'm talking about. Well, I'm supposed to be sweeping, said Rob. And he held up the broom. Says who, said Beauchamp, suddenly angry. Your daddy, he ain't the boss. I'm the boss, and if I say let's go, you say all right. All right, said Rob. And he looked over his shoulder, wishing fervently that Willie Mayer's father would appear to save him from Beauchamp, knowing at the same time he could not be saved, that he was on his own. Good, said Beauchamp. Climb on up. Rob climbed into the passenger seat, and there was a big brown grocery bag at his feet. Go on and... Put that in the back, said Beauchamp as he swung into the driver's seat. The bag was heavy and it stunk. Rob carefully put it on the floor in the back and then he noticed his hands. There was blood on his fingers. That's just from the meat, said Beauchamp. It won't hurt you none. He cranked the engine, it roared to life and they went tearing around behind the Kentucky Star into the woods. Beauchamp drove like crazy he gunned for trees and then swerved away from them at the last minute, whooping and hollering the whole time. You ain't, you ain't going to believe what I got to show you, Beauchamp hollered at him. No, sir, said Rob weakly. What? Beauchamp shouted. No, sir, Rob shouted back. I ain't going to believe it. But he did believe it. He did. He believed it with all of his heart. All right, chapter 19. Beauchamp hit the brakes. We're almost there, he said. You gotta close your eyes so it's a surprise. Rob closed his eyes and the Jeep went forward slowly. Don't cheat now, Beauchamp said. Keep them eyes closed. Yes, sir, Rob said. All right, Beauchamp said finally. Go on and open them up. He had pulled the Jeep up as close to the tiger cage as possible without driving right into it. Tell me what you see, he crowed. Tell me what it is before your eyes. Uh... A tiger, said Rob. He let his mouth drop open. He tried to look excited and amazed. Yep, said Beauchamp, king of the jungle, and he's all mine. Wow, said Rob. You own him? That's right, said Beauchamp. Fella I know owed me some money, paid me with a tiger. That's the way real men do business in tigers. He can't complete with the cage. Toothpick in the side of his mouth danced up and down. Beauchamp put a finger to it to steady it to silence. What are you going to do with him? Rob asked. I'm studying my options. I figure I could set him up out front in the, of the Kentucky Star, have him draw me some more business into the hotel. The tiger stood and stared at Beauchamp. Beauchamp looked away from him. He tapped his thick fingers on the steering wheel. I also might just kill him, Beauchamp said, and skin him and make me a tiger coat. I ain't made up my mind. He's a lot of work, I'll tell you that. He needs meat twice a day. That's where you come in. I need you to come out here and feed him. Two bucks every time you do it. How's that sound? Rob swallowed hard. Well, how, how do I get the meat in the cage, he asked. Beauchamp dug into his pocket and pulled out a set of keys. With these, he said. He shook the keys and they gave a sad jingle. Don't pay no attention to the big keys. There for the locks on the door. Open them up and that tiger will get out and eat you for sure. Understand? I ought not to give you this whole set, but I know you won't open up that door. Right? You ain't no fool. Right? Rob, terrified that keys to the cage existed and that they were about to be handed to him, nodded. See this tiny key? Beauchamp said. Rob nodded again. That's for the food door. Right there. Beauchamp pointed at a small door at the bottom of the cage. You just open that up and toss the meat in 
a piece at a time, just like this. Duchamp swung himself out of the Jeep with a grunt. He reached in the back seat for the grocery bag, took out a piece of meat, bent over and unlocked the tiny door and threw the meat in. The tiger leaped forward and Beauchamp took a quick step back, stumbling. Well, that's really all there is to it, he said, straightening up. His forehead was shiny with sweat and his hands were trembling. Well, what's the tiger's name, Rob asked. Name, said Beauchamp. He ain't got no name. You got to name, you've got to name something before you toss a piece of meat to it? Rob shrugged and he blushed. He bent over to scratch his legs so that he wouldn't have to look at Beauchamp's sweaty and angry face. You want to get introduced proper, said Beauchamp. In a mocking voice, well then, get out of the Jeep. Rob climbed down. Beauchamp grabbed hold of the fence and shook it. The tiger looked up, from, uh, up at him from his meat. His muzzle was red with blood, and he stared at Beauchamp with a fierce look in his eyes that was familiar to Rob. Hey, Beauchamp shouted, you see this boy here? And he pointed at Rob. He's your meal ticket. Not me, it's this boy. He's got the keys now, understand? I don't got them no more. This boy's got him. He's your boy. The tiger stared at Beauchamp a minute more, and then he slowly lowered his head and started back to work on the meat. Now you two know each other, said Beauchamp. He pulled a tattered bandana from his pocket and wiped the sweat off of his forehead. On the hair-raising ride back to the Kentucky Star, Rob realized who the tiger stare reminded him of. It was Sistine. He knew that when he told her that he had the keys to the cage, her eyes would glow with the same fierce light. He knew that she would insist that now they had to let the tiger Remember, Sistine wants to let that tiger go. So, we shall see what happens. All right, guys. Have a good one. Bye.